You know, you may ask, why? Why did I decide to come here, Dr. Jarvis? Because I'm so excited for you. Randy and I have begun this about a year ago, in which we both went to North Carolina. And we were at what's called the Hunt Institute. And it was a two-day session with, uh, with uh, Secretary Duncan. And we set a goal right then that we were going to participate to raise the top. We were going to do it our way. We weren't going to have someone tell us, this is how you do it. We're going to do it our way. And so we set about saying, that means all in. No one's on the sideline, all in. So if we don't get virtually all the districts or the bulk of the districts, um, I consider that a failure. So you ask why Randy and I are on the road every day trying to encourage, that's why. Because I don't think we win if we don't have all in. Um, our kids don't win if we don't have all in. And the second thing we said back then is, we're going to produce a plan that's our plan. If we produce somebody else's plan, it won't work in our state. We're unique. We're unique. When we talk about math and science, it's like any other state. Candidly, we're the most trade-dependent state in the nation. We're number four in the nation in volume behind you know, three other massively larger states than us. Per capita, no one even holds a candle. So the international language of competition for us is math and science, period. We are a diverse state. We are blessed with our diversity in our state and in our classrooms. And we ought to use that opportunity of that diversity to ensure that we're even more competitive globally. So when we put together our plan with the four goals that Randy talked about, we were looking at what's good, what's right for Washington State. You know how passionate I feel about early childhood education. I didn't just come to it. I started Washington Learns with Judy Hartman, my policy advisor in the back, as my mentor. Uh, and I was really trying to figure out, how in the world are we losing these kids in high school? Why are they dropping out? And so then it came to me, clearly, well, it didn't happen in high school. So then immediately I went to middle school. Well, there's where the problem is. Now, if I could just solve it there, and then I realized, no, it didn't happen there. It happened in grade school. And then when I got to that grade school, I thought, no, it didn't happen here. When those kids come to kindergarten and they're not ready to learn, they get pushed through the system, get frustrated, and they drop out. So if we really want these kids to have a shot in life, that we've got to dedicate ourselves to making sure they're ready to learn when they hit kindergarten. Hence, we created the Department of Early Learning. We have a public-private -pri partnership with Thrive by Five. We're unique in the country. The other thing we're saying is, you know what? If the kid yesterday graduated from high school, then that kid today ought to graduate from a two-year college. If yesterday the kid graduated from a two-year college, today they ought to graduate from a four-year college. We want everybody to get more education. Superintendent, I'm here because you're the largest school district to sign up. I couldn't be more proud that it's become. <laughs> Mayor, I'm so glad you could be here. Uh, that tells you what a community effort this is. Um, Mike? Uh, it's, been a, it's been a long year of working together with the Washington Education Association, but that's what I meant by all in. Uh, and we've got our State Board of Education that couldn't make it today, but they're on our team, and they've been working hard for the legislation on accountability. So this is about our teachers, this is about our school board members, this is about our principals and our superintendents, but what it really is about at the end of the day, it's about our kids. And I tell you, I'm getting Arnie Duncan out here. I have one major purpose in mind. I want to show Arnie Duncan an innovative school. And then I want to challenge him to show me that any charter school in America, without any failure, is happening like what's happening here in the Tacoma School District with innovative schools. I call them innovative schools. They are exactly what I think Arnie Duncan's talking about. I think they're exactly what the President of the United States is talking about. But you don't have to do it some prescriptive way and call it a charter school. So we decided, with the voters having said no three times, we weren't going to go back there. That we were going to take the spirit of what was intended, the spirit of what was intended through our innovation schools and convince them that we're leading the nation. And my intent is to bring Arnie Duncan to the Tacoma School District and introduce him to innovative schools and say, this is what America should be doing. Call it a charter school, call it what you want, I don't really care. These are the innovative schools that are really going to turn our kids around. 
and give them the chance to succeed in school and to succeed in life. So I come here today to congratulate you. I've come from Washington, D.C. I traveled up the, the road to get to the memorial that we have for our fallen law enforcement officers. I was determined to get to here, and I know Randy was as well, because I'm telling you, I'm proud of the Tacoma School District. You're making a difference in the lives of these children. That's what it's all about. You know, if I, if I can do any legacy in my 30-some years in public service, it will be that I left the kids of Washington State a little better off than when I arrived, that they had health care, that they had a chance at a good education, they had a loving home, that they felt protected, and realized that there was nothing they couldn't do. So thank you all for what you've done for the kids of the Tacoma School District. This is about success. And with all of you on the same page, on the same team, we're there, Randy uh, and the State Board and I, to make sure that you are successful, because if you're successful, your kids in that classroom will be successful. Congratulations, everyone. A lot of people have asked me the question, well, what exactly is this race for the top and, and what are we trying to do? And it's really four things, but it's unfortunate. You know, some people go, well, what's the new? Really, it's four things we've been working on that I truly believe that it's four things, but we can be more innovative if occasionally we have a little extra resource. Now, I don't blame the state for not coming up with extra resource, but if we can't come up with the resource and we're just on one level, is there a way to grab some other resources to push us along? And here's the four goals that we thought would make our plan, that everybody could be together and be focused on so our communities could come together and say, early learning. The governor has been a strong supporter. Many communities have stepped up and said, you know, part of our graduation issue and losing kids on graduation is early learning, that we never get them at a point when we get to start and we spend a lot of resources trying to do tutorial. So early learning is one of our goals. That seems like everybody goes, yeah, the research supports that. And then math and science. We can all look at each other and say, can we do a better job in math and science? Do we need to try different ways of getting different kids involved in math and science so their future is secure of doing really and helping our economy and making a difference? And then the achievement gap. We gotta look each other in the face and say, you know, with some groups of kids, we don't do as good as we should. And we have to address that. And sometimes it's going to take more resources because some kids have more challenges than other kids. And we need those resources. In one school may need more resources than another school, not because they're failing, not because teachers aren't doing working hard, but because kids come to those schools with a few more challenges than other kids. And we've got to be supportive and provide those resources. And the last thing is be sure that kids are college and career ready. When they graduate from high school, they have a rigorous curriculum, but also a relevant curriculum, so their education can actually be used in the career they choose to go forward in, no matter what level it is. So we can all agree on that, and i gotta, I got to say, innovation. You know, we've got to come to the table and work together as educators and say, how can we do things different to meet the need? I mean, the Lincoln Project and what you're doing at the School of the Arts and all those things to kind of adjust our schedules and just how we do it. But with the mind frame that we're going to make a difference for kids and that kids are our focus. When we do that, it seems like, you know, the adults get out of the way and the kids learn. I mentioned our school improvement grant and our four middle schools. People have asked me, with some surprise, how are we doing that? It's such a radical change for the teachers. It's something that hasn't been done elsewhere in the state. And I have tried to consistently say to people, it's because of a wonderful partnership that exists in Tacoma. And that is the Tacoma Education Association has worked with us consistently, not just in this, but throughout these last three years that I've been blessed to be here. But as we approach the tough question of what do we do with schools that we're looking at closure and turnaround and transformation, the Tacoma Education Association has stepped up and said, we need to get on with it, we've got work to do, and we will be side by side. But here's the question. Do we have the courage and the political will to expand what we know works and to not do what we know isn't working anymore? I think the answer is yes in Tacoma. Race to the top sets high expectations for our children, but also importantly, it sets high expectations for the adults who educate them.